Uh, and it, it seems like such a little thing, but it's instilling confidence in their ability to speak to another human <laughs> and ask for something. Um, so I guess I would be self-aware of those moments. And if you are you know, married or in a relationship, challenge each other. And this is something that, that my wife and I are really good at is, you know, not in a, in a mean spirited way, obviously, but when my wife just jumps in and does something for the kids, you know, I'll take a second to be like, Hey, you know, make them do that. The days are long, but the years are short. Scott, welcome. What does this mean to you? Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, great timing for that quote. Um, father of three, oldest is 17 now, uh, just about to graduate high school. And it was, you know, it sounds so cliche, but it was literally just yesterday, uh, dropping him off at pre-K. He had such <clears throat> detachment issues. Um, he was, uh, we were blessed to have uh, our parents help raise our, our family so they never went to daycare. So when he went to pre-K, it was uh, very difficult. And I remember vividly, uh, Megan Sishan, God bless her, the pre-K teacher, she, she was dragging Tyler away. He was clinging you know, to her as he was reaching for me saying, don't leave me uh, in pre-K. And now uh, he's graduating high school, you know, and, and so, yeah, the, the days are long. The days like that were, were certainly stressful and there were many others, but gosh, it, it went fast. And it's so, I mean, it's painful in the moment, but it's so healthy for our children to know that they can go and do new things and that they can overcome, you know, like the heartbreak of leaving the house and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, in many ways we're, we're coming full circle on that where now he's looking to go away to school and, you know, leaving again and, and all new, uh, you know, sets of scariness out there and in unknown waters. But, you know, it, it's, uh, I would argue, even as adults, you know, we, we have to push ourselves into those situations and too many of us don't. Um, and we just live in our kind of comfort zones and we can't become kind of complacent and we have all these thoughts and dreams and wishes in our head that never come to fruition because we're, we're scared to, to drop ourselves off at pre-K, if you will, <laughs> you know, how do you, how did you impart this, this sort of this courage, this discomfort, this enjoying of the discomfort to your, to your family? Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if I have a, a better solution than just jumping and figuring it out as we go. And, and that's something that, that is kind of a motto of, of it is of mine. It's one that I instill, you know, with, with the kids too, is that, look, you know, the, the more you just jump into things, the more you're going to figure it out. You, you can learn so much from a textbook. You can learn so much from listening to a great podcast, but until you do it, you know, and this is the Mel Robbins knowledge action gap, right? We have a lot right. of people that are just knowledge junkies out there. You got to take action. Yeah. I, one of the big things for the feel good fathers that are listening is there's a really big difference between knowledge and then applied, hmm. applied education. And so, um, I always, I always think about it in terms of like mimetic traps. So many people are like, Oh yeah, I've read a hundred books this year. It's like, really? What did you read? What'd you learn from that book? What right, was your favorite right. book? Yeah. Cause I, I know a lot of the personal development books out there, they have like 20, there's 20 actionable insights in each book. Are you applying all 20 of those? You know, like when, when do you have you time? Doing? If all you're doing yeah. is reading. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so I think from a, I think that, uh, in that world, cause I don't, I don't want to be critical of it, but I, I do think that there's a, you can have a conversation and you are, um, educating yourself in such a way that you can have interesting conversations or reference certain pieces of information or reinforce certain ideas that you have. Um, I've even been super critical of some of my former leaders that have said, I try and learn at least one lesson from each book. And I'm kind of like, well, you can do that from one page. So right. If you're reading a whole book and you can, and you're only taking one lesson out of it, like, sure, you're getting some benefit, but you're spending a lot of time for what is usually practical wisdom per chapter. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the yes. YouTube summary in three minutes will give you that, those 20 lessons usually hundred <laughs> percent, you know, hundred percent. And so applying and just getting out there and doing it very critical, very important lesson to do, um, what would you say would be sort of the number one thing that a, a feel good father could do to, in, to encourage this in himself and then encourage this in, in his kids? 
Yeah, well, I'll start with the kids that, you know, so for yourself, be self aware of those moments. And these don't have to be big moments, right? We do this all the time where we we think, you know, I'll say, hey, Jay, what was your small win from today? And, and, and you're not thinking small, you're thinking, oh, I don't know, nothing really big happened. No, no, no. Like, you know, you, you saw a cardinal in a tree and you're like, wow, that's really cool. Like that, that's a, that's a feel good, you know, small little win. I was out walking. I saw a cool bird, like, you know, just reflect on the positive, but be self-aware of those moments when, is this something I'm doing for my child? Or is this something I should be asking my child to do? And I'm trying to think of a good situation. So let's say we're okay. A good situation. We're at a restaurant and you know, they, they need, whatever, ketchup, right? Something that is something else or something's not right with the order. And instinctively, you're going to want to next time the server comes over say, Hey, you know, Ty didn't get whatever, or can you bring whatever? Make the child ask that question, uh, you know, or, or make that request. Uh, and it, it seems like such a little thing, but it's instilling confidence in their ability to speak to another human <laughs> and ask for something. Um, so I guess I would be self-aware of those moments. And if you are, you know, married or in a relationship, challenge each other. And this is something that that my wife and I are really good at is, you know, not in a, in a mean spirited way, obviously, but when my wife just jumps in and does something for the kids, you know, I'll take a second to be like, Hey, you know, make them do that. Right. Or make, make Jenna ask that question, you know? And, and so we kind of are accountability partners for each other, but being aware of those moments and catching yourself doing, is this, is this something I should do for them? Like, or, or is this something they should do on their own? I'm really reminded of the Dalai Lama when he said, you know, if you really love something, you'll let it go. That this is like the true act of love is that you're, you're saying, um, well, one of the roles, one of the responsibilities of the feel good father, right. Is to, create an adult yeah and you're not creating adults if you're doing everything for them this is the um that's the the core principle behind the work and so just intentionally putting age appropriate maturity appropriate activities in front of them to um to kind of grow in the experience and grow in the wisdom of their own personal capabilities we think of that in chores, right? Like most mm -hmm. of the time it's like, Oh, can you set the table? Can you do the chores? I remember, uh, a couple of years ago, my daughter wasn't allowed to leave. My eldest wasn't allowed to leave the driveway. And I can distinctly remember the first day she was like, well, can I go play with the neighbor? I said, yep. She's like, well, you're going to come with me. And I was like, Nope. <laughs> and she said, what? And I said, well, I can see you because this is my window. I said, I can see you from my window here. And I just watched her walk out and she kind of stopped at the end of the driveway and kind of looked down the street at this big, scary new experience. And then yeah. gradually walked over to the neighbor's house who I could see and then started a nice little piece of confidence of like, oh yeah, I can leave. I can leave the house. I can leave the driveway. Yeah. Um, I can do these things. Small win, uh, so you know? And, yeah. and, and so we're, we're just big on the, on the human interaction. I think in this digital distracted world adults included that we live in um at the end of the day we still have to be able to talk to each other and i realize we're doing this over zoom which you know is digital but whatever um you get the point right and so if if we're going to order from a pizzeria or our takeout we'll make one of the kids call in the order uh if we drive them down the to, to pick it up you know we'll give them the card or cash or whatever and send them in to to pay for it and pick it up and and so it's any any way we can get them out in the real world where we're you know in the earshot um and and have them actually handle those situations and, and again it sounds so simple but how many kids you know until they get to 15 16 17 years old they've never really had to do any of that so yeah throw throw them out there I love that. That's, I mean, I, I can't imagine a better overall philosophy for just reasoning and imparting some wisdom and experience into your kids. That self-assuredness, that independence, it's something that all kids want. Um, how did they, I mean, we were talking about your eldest. I mean, how did your eldest react to this? Like, what were the changes you saw in him? Um, you know, just what we talked about, the, just the, the aha moment of, I, I can do this. It wasn't that bad. And I, and I think where it all comes 
full circle is having that conversation afterwards. This happened to me yesterday. Um, I, I own an insurance agency and I had one of my best team members. She's a, a phenomenal employee, one of my best team members. Uh, she, I had this training session and I asked her if she would lead it because she's masterfully skilled at what I was asking her to teach. Now, as you know, a lot of people can do things, but they can't teach things. So she was like freaking out all day long. This was a two o'clock meeting all day long. I'm getting texts from her. And I finally at 1 30, I'm like, Hey, I can jump on the call. If she's like, no, 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 I'll do it. So now fast forward, it's over. I said, scale of one to 10, how to go. And she goes 12. And I'm like, for real. And she's like, yeah, she goes, I have no idea why I was so freaked out going into that. Like that was so easy. And so even as adults, right? We, we, we build up these fears. And then once we push ourselves through it and we, we turn around and reflect and we go, why, why was I so freaked out about that? Right. And so same thing happens with the kids. Um, you know, afterwards have that quick conversation, you know, Hey, what'd you think about that? You know, or, or, or what'd you think of that person you were talking to, or, or how did that feel to you? Um, nothing, you know, you'll get a lot of one word, two word answers. Right. But but what you're doing is you're just reinforcing to them that dude, you're capable, right? You, you don't, mm -hmm. you don't need us. Like you're capable of doing things on your own. Um, and, and so I think that's the kind of the, the second piece to it is just that quick reflection. how to it feel? What'd you think? You know, talk to me about it. You mentioned that your accountability partners with your wife, mm -hmm. do you, does this ever happen? Like her, she to you or you to her with, pushing us out into comfort zone, yeah. out of comfort zones. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it, it's, um, you know, my wife's a school teacher and, uh, I'm, I've been in the corporate world sales entrepreneur. So, we're, you know, we're just, we're cut from a different cloth, right? I could, I don't know if I could do what she does at the elementary school level. I like the older kids, uh, and she's on record where she can never do what, what I do. And, and so, I don't know if I have great examples, but because there's just a bunch of little things along the way where, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, can you can you make this call for me or can you reach out to this person? Um, and she's like, eh, that's not like her thing, um, and, but but she'll do it, you know, and uh, and then she pushes me or, or did when we were a little bit younger, you know, knew we're into this. Our kids a little bit older now, but she pushed me into to coaching the youth sports. You know, I was scared to death. One of the scariest things ever was coaching T-ball, right? I'm like all these, these little, you know, five, six year olds running wild. And, and here I'm, you know, trying to, I, I coach at the varsity level for baseball. So I'm trying to like, you know, teach crow hops and they're just trying to keep their pants on at, at that age. right? <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, so we, we certainly push each other uh, to, to do things that, that aren't natural. Has there, are there any moments where this has resulted in some sort of failure? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, not on a mass level, but I, I think I'd be hard pressed to find situations where there wasn't some level of failure or area for improvement with everything we do. Um, you know, and maybe that's just the type A in me. And, and you know, we, we never really get to the finish line because as soon as we get close, we just move it. Right. And, and we're big. One, one thing that we talk about a lot with ourselves when with the kids is the the three second pause and what that is is like that that inhale and that exhale in three seconds before you react or before you respond take three seconds to just think about it because how often do we say things spontaneously emotionally in the moment when we're like oh i wish i didn't do that or i wish i could take that back um and, and so we pause during the moment and then we're, we're always, not always, but we try to, to pause and reflect after certain moments and think, how could I do that better? Um, I'm a big uh, journaler, right? I love writing. I, I love to, to positive journal and everyone's got a different way to, to do this. So my positive journal is first thing when I wake up, All right? So as soon as I get up, I, I train my brain to think about everything I can that was just good from the day before. But then at night, we have a, a, a routine, you know, some nights are a little different, but when we can, we have a routine where we, uh, we drink tea, right? We, we get away from the, the digital, the blue light. Um, we read, uh, we just kind of sit in silence. And that's when I reflect on things that, that I could have done a little bit better that day, you know, and, and, uh, you know, just challenge myself to, to look at things from a different angle, not that the moment's over. 
Um, so we spent a lot of time, you know, in, in reflection uh, to, to identify those failures or areas of opportunity. Do your, you do this with your kids too? Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're not as disciplined with it and it's certainly not something that, that we force upon. They're not, well, here's the problem. If they're in our room, uh, enjoying tea and reading, then we're not enjoying the moment. <laughs> and I say that lovingly, that right. Sense. But, but yeah, it takes yeah, the yeah. peace away from the moment. <laughs> so, um, you know, 100%. what we do, what we do with them, uh, which is a little, um, you know, just to, what's the word, contrarian is, you know, instead of what was, what was good in your day or how'd your day go, you know, it's like, Hey, tell me about a moment today that, that you wish didn't happen. Or, or tell me about, you know, what happened today that, you know, could have, could have went better. Right. So instead of just, you know, everything was good, whatever, like, give me something specific from today. And really that five, 10 seconds is forcing them to reflect for just a little bit, you know, on something that, that could have went better. And so it you're creates not hanging out in these moments. You're not hanging out in these moments. You're, you're just, you're trying to create the, the beginning of a skill. Um, it, this is kind of, it's, it's interesting here because what you're, you're creating this confidence, you're creating this, this like, Hey, you're capable, you're kind of doing it. Um, and it's, it's, it's so funny because whenever I think of, trying to impart a skill. And this is probably a pretty big unlock for me. I'm thinking about the sustained effort. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, we got to sit here for like 10, 15 yeah. minutes and yeah. let's, let's gruel, let's go, let's dig yeah. in, do the work. And I'm like, interesting. I think, I think that there's a, a certain freedom and a certain, um, again, that personal responsibility, that personal ah, responsibility is not the right word capability that you're in part and growing in your kids that any feel good father, I think could really pay attention to. I love that um, self-awareness, Jay. And, and so a lot of what I do with my kids is, is what I've learned in the corporate world. And one thing I've learned, and I know, you know, is everyone hates long meetings, <laughs> right? It's right. so right, wrong, or indifferent. <laughs> I've identified 15 minutes as the limit, right? I literally at my office, I have a stop clock on a digital clock on my desk that I, is when my, one of my employees sits down, I hit start. And whatever we're going to talk about, we got 15 minutes or less, right? So let's just talk about what's most wildly important, right? Let's be efficient with our time. We don't want this to drag on neither of us. We don't want to dread the meeting. Um, and so same thing with the kids. And it, it rarely even goes 15 minutes, right? We're, we're all about, we, we don't carry the past into the future, good or bad, right? Um, we don't hold grudges. That, that's a, a big peace in our family is like, you know, it, it, frozen, right? So my, my youngest is a, a girl, Jenna, she's 11. Um, you know, you'll hear us say all the time, like, let it go, Elsa, just let it go, you know, and because they'll, when they repeat something two, three, th yeah, but yeah, but it's like, let it go, Elsa, just let it go, you know, and, and let's, let's move on. So, so yeah, a lot of on the fly coaching in the moment, reflection, let it go, move on, right? Mm. I like this. It's, you've got this, you know, you've got these, these little ones that are kind of growing into independence. They're, they're not relying on you. They're, um, that's not the right word. It's not the right energy behind what you're saying. Yeah. You're they're, not that far off though. Right. Because we, we don't want yeah. them to be dependent and that's not to, I mean, we're very active. We're very present, but we challenge them to act as if we weren't there. I think, I think a lot about, uh, like the analogy I try and hold in my head is I have the farm and I'm raising my kids and there's going to be one day I give them the knife and I say, okay, you're bringing in the horses or like go feed the horses, mm -hmm. you know? And so they have the knife now. So they have the tool that they need to undo the bay, like undo the hay, like get everything ready. Like they have the knife as a symbolism for they've got the, they have what they need. Right. Yeah. And it's like, oh man, this sounds, I mean, this sounds really great. Like, so if I feel good fathers, this is, um, this is wonderful. Like, I think this is a, an amazing tool to, uh, adopt immediately into your life. Um, let's chat a little bit about your parents. So yeah. you're this person, you're, uh, you have this style. Uh, did you learn this from like, is this a generational thing? Did you learn this from your parents? Yeah. So, so I struggle with the, uh, I don't know the Gen X, Gen Z. I, I don't even know what the, I don't even know what I am. Right. But, but I was the, what do they call them? Helicopter parents. Is that, or are we helicopter? Parents? What I'm, what I'm getting at here is my, my parents weren't, my parents weren't very, uh, active. Now, my parents were split. So when I was uh, in fifth grade, 
Uh, I was 10 years old. I have one sibling, a brother uh, who was five. So he, he's close to six years, actually younger than me. And at that point, at the age of 10 in fifth grade, I kind of became a father. You know, my, my father had left. Uh, it wasn't a, a super pretty divorce. Uh, they weren't very cordial in the beginning. They've since, you know, we, we've made headway. It's 30 years ago. Um, but uh, but yeah, my mom was, she worked a lot of hours. She was a single mom now having to support us financially. And uh, she was out of the house by 6 a.m. And so it was me and my five-year-old brother. I had to feed him. I had to get him dressed. We walked to school. Um, and, and I had to make sure that when I was done with school, I, I got him. And we, we walked back to typically like my, our grandparents' house and hung there. Um, you had to make sure the homework got done, right? So, so really at the age of 10. I, I joined this, uh, I don't know if it was the feel good fatherhood at that point, but it was, <laughs> it was fatherhood, you know, nonetheless, <laughs> I didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah. forced fatherhood, yeah. right? Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it, it's, um, I guess, you know, a lot of what I learned was maybe that's where my style comes from is, is you know, hey, I'm different, obviously, from, from my parents, my wife and I, but, um, but we do want to give them that space. And my wife was, was very similar the way she was raised. We're both the oldest, um, you know, which might play into it. But um, we, you know, it's funny. I, we like to call this generation the trophy generation. And, you know, these kids are spoiled. And these kids are entitled. And when we were this and we were that, right? And, and I like to let you're, people go for saying, a minute. Then, you're saying uh, us. I'm you're sorry. People- but- the kids, our, you know, our kids are, you know, the people call our kids like the trophy generation, you know, or, or, I don't know how old you are, Jay, but you know, I'm 45. So it, it's, okay. you know, it, it, and I pause people and I'm like, Hey, who's buying these kids, the trophies, right? Who, who's the one that's enabling them? Who's the one that's, that's giving them all the stuff that, that we're complaining about, right? The kids don't know what they don't know. And, right. you know, it's, it's us in many ways that that are enabling them and coddling them and, and saying, oh, it's okay, there's no losers and everybody wins. And, you know, and, and so it's not the kid's fault, right? And, and so don't complain about it. So so in many ways, you know, what I learned from my parents is, uh, you know, hey, I don't, this wasn't the lesson they were trying to give me, but but space is okay. Like you gotta, you gotta figure it out. Uh, and, and the other thing I think we lose sight of, Jay, is the human race is resilient. You know, there's 7 billion humans on the uh, living right now. And before us, there were 100 plus billion. Everyone's going to be OK, right? We, we've figured this out for a long time. <laughs> if you give your kids a little space and a little leeway and empower them to make some decisions, they're not going to mess it up that bad. Right? <laughs> so, so right. you know, give them some grace. We're the, we're the descendants of the survivors. That's the way I like to think about it. Like my back, back down my family line, like we lived, we made it, (laughs) you Uh know? So yeah, yeah, it's, 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 uh, um, there's that part, which is the fun part, but the other perspective that you're talking about here, which is really great, which is that they're going to be okay. And then on top of it, when we combine that with the previous lesson, it's like, they got to figure it out on their own. Yeah. If I hand them all the answers, that this is the thing. I can keep giving you fishes for the rest of your life. But if I want you to be fed, I need to teach you how to fish. Yep. That's great. 100%. That's lovely. Yeah. This is a gross one, but the one I talk about all the time is like if we get a new puppy and we let the puppy crap on the living room floor for three years, and then all of a sudden the puppy comes in year four, craps on the living room floor, and we smack it in the face saying you can't do that. The puppy's like, what, what? Right. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> they don't know. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it's exactly. kind of the same with our kids. It's like we we give them everything and we don't give them the space and we don't trust them. We don't empower them. And then all of a sudden they turn 15 or like, you don't do any chores. You don't help with this. You don't do with that. It's like, like, well, what? What is all that stuff? I've never heard of it. <laughs> you know? That's interesting. Yeah, that's it's good. Like, I, I, I feel I feel some some vindication and I feel some because like I've definitely adopted some of these things myself and I've, I've always like wanted her to be, I've always wanted to be curious to figure out who she is, like my eldest. Mm-hmm. And then I've always wanted her to be able to stand on her own two feet. Um, How old is your oldest? Uh, she's turning 11 this year. Oh, okay. So we're the same. Yeah. Well, yeah as far as 11 year old daughter. Yeah. 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 I was thinking about like when you were saying like the Elsa thing, I was like, Oh, it's like, yeah, I gotta be kind of around the same age. Um, okay. So let's, I mean, let's talk about the, like, this next piece. So you've got this, um, you've got this forced fatherhood element 
you've learned a couple of things. You've been taking care of your son. Um, what were the, like, what were the negative parts of that, that like, that impacted you that kind of led you because your past is a gift. It, like what are the negative parts? What, what led to this part? Yeah. It's interesting in, in that. Um, and, and we go through this as adults where we have this recency bias and we think whatever is happening, good or bad, right. But typically bad. Um, we think it's never going to change. It's never going to, I'm never going to have money again. I'm never going to be in a relationship that great again. I'm never going to, you know, have a friend like that again. Right. And, and so there's this recency bias. And, and when we're trapped in the bottle, we can't read the label and what happens eventually. And we know this, right. We, but it's hard when you're, when you're knee deep in it is that things happen for you, not to you, right. Everything's happened for a reason. There's a bigger plan and and you'll look back at this at, at some point and you'll be grateful for it because it's going to improve you. Um, so, you know, I struggled deeply as a young adult without even realizing it. And I was, too proud or stubborn or ignorant, frankly, um, to, to see a therapist. Um, I just wanted to figure things out on my own. And I went away to college. I was, I was on my own at college. Uh, the workload got tough, the freedom uh, of being out at college and, and a lot of the stresses I was caring for my college or uh, uh, younger days got to me. I started having really bad panic attacks, anxiety, um, not understanding what that was, feeling like a failure because of that, and that I was messed up. And finally, I broke. Um, and it, it actually was my my wife early in our marriage, where she's like, "You need to talk to someone." And I did, and we unpacked a lot of things, and and really everything came back to that ten year old boy who one hundred percent believed that his parents got divorced because of him, and you know, for, for so many years from that point on, I was trying to please everybody. Right. And, and I was, I was living with this imposter syndrome that you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not strong enough. Like, who are you, um, to, to have any success or believe you can do whatever. Um, and, and really the, the more work I did internally with the therapist, you know, it, it, it came to light that it all kind of stemmed back to, that summer of 87, you know, when my dad left and I internalized that as my fault. And so I, I share that for a couple of reasons. One, don't be too proud. Don't be too stubborn. Don't be ignorant, right? <clears throat> if you're struggling, talk to somebody, uh, start somewhere. Don't hold it in like I did for <laughs> better part of like, you know, 15 years. Um, you know, and, but, but the other thing is, is, you know, feel good fathers and, and mothers who are watching too, my wife and I are very cautious about our disagreements. Now I'm not saying we're perfect, right? Uh, you know, so, so the, the fights, right? It, it, it's uh, we're very cautious about being in front of the kids because when I look back after doing this work on the couch, when I look back, uh, you know, I would sit at the top of my stairs and listen to my parents fight. And a lot of it was about, me, but not me specifically, just it was their parenting styles. My father was very strict. Uh, he wanted things a certain way. If I scored three goals in a soccer game, but missed the fourth, I should have had four, right? We didn't celebrate the three. We asked why not the four. Uh, if I got a 98 and a test, it's what happened to the other two points. Like it was never good. I was never good enough. And and my mother was the other way with it. Right. And and so they butted heads and, and fought. And, and so we don't realize sometimes as parents what the kids are hearing. Um, or how they're interpreting it. And, and, you know, to you and your spouse, it might be ah, no big deal. Like, you know, it, it, you know, you left something out and you weren't supposed to, or you didn't do something. And I snapped and yeah, sorry. And you apologize later, but something might come up in dialogue that your kids are hearing. And this also becomes learned behavior too, you know, so, so they're, they're, they're going to model you. You're their, you're their hero, uh, whether you want to be or not, right. You are. Um, and, and so, I guess that's a big, long story into just be very aware of the conversations that you're having as partners uh, in front of the children, good or bad. Mm, mm. Do you, so I totally get this piece. And I think that there's a, there's a place for, as a feel good father to model reconciliation and anger that there's a, you know, you, you need to have the disagreements. I'm curious 
and, and this is not, not a judgment on anything, but like my perspective on this is like, if we do have it, I usually always go and say, there's usually a reconciliation afterwards. Like, so with my eldest, I'll say, Hey, we may have been talking about you or this was going on. We want, you know, the, like, this is the context of what, like, I'll explain the context of the disagreement, or I'll say I was hang like, I'm hyperglycemic. So I get hangry. So we have this thing where it's like, and even, even now my daughter would be like, are you hangry? <laughs> it's about five o'clock. I'm like, yes, let me go get a glass of water. Let me go get some food. Let me, let me take care of this thing. Cause I'm, I'm a bit hangry. And so, um, there's, but the, the purpose of, of the story is that there's, there's a coming back to, and a, a, a showing of like, I'm a human being, like, mm -hmm. we're going to have disagreements. You're going to have disagreements, you know? Um, and then kind of modeling that, that piece was anything of that. Like, is that something that, that is in your toolbox? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. And this comes full circle, Jay, to what we were talking about earlier when, and I said, I kind of spend the last part of my day reflecting. And so if my wife and I did have, and, and don't misunderstand, right? We, we snap, we're, we're both very emotional, fiery people, right? And, and so, we're human beings. Yeah, of course, right? <laughs> and, and, so, uh, and, and, and I'm overweight, so I'm hangry a lot, right? So it's, uh, <laughs> it's nothing to do with science, but the, um, when I'm reflecting at night, right? And, and the big thing we talk about not holding grudges, we also talk about not going to bed angry. Uh, and that's a big thing. So I have to make right under my roof in my house, whatever didn't go right, that day, whether that's an apology to my wife, uh, whether that is walking upstairs and just having that chat you just talked about for a couple minutes and explaining the context, uh, you know, that's the reflection piece, you know, with the kids. Um, yeah, hundred percent, you know, and it, to me, you know, we're just big on this win the day approach and, and every day is a new start. It's almost like golf, you know, where you, you can be a great golfer, but you're going to get a seven on a hole at some point and you know, whatever, you know, let it go, move on next hole. You're, you're at zero again. It's a new start, but in order to go in as the best version of yourself to that next hole, you might want to just reflect on what went wrong to make that seven, you know, on, on the previous hole. So, so hundred percent, I'm down with what you're saying. Um, take a second at the end of the day to, to just have that conversation. Got it. Got it. Thanks for connecting. And own it. There. You know, that's another thing. That's another topic, but you know, own it good or bad, own everything in your life. And that's a huge lesson for our kids. I, I never want to see finger pointing. I never want to, you know, yeah, but you know, we talk a lot about anything that comes after, but forget it. Right. It's just, no, it happened. Own it. Right. And I'm a, I'm a Ted Lasso fan. I don't know if you watch Ted Lasso, but you know, oh, my it, goodness. Okay. Sorry, so we started the new, we started from season one again to kind of catch uh -huh. up for the new season that's coming yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. And, so coach uh, weird, right? Just do better. Right. So we talk, yeah, just, just, do, just better. do better, just do better. Yeah. I'll do better. You do better. Like that's, that's our, that's it. <laughs> I, I, I really loved it. I modeled the, from, from Ted Lasso, the like, all right, you can be as mad and upset and disappointed and sad as you want for about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Is that right. The, the goldfish, yeah. right. The goldfish yeah. has a 10 second memory. Just forget that's it. Right. <laughs> yep. yep. Keep moving on. I love it. That's actually, that's super great. Um, I love that stuff. You, you said holding grudges. So, yeah. um, let's talk, let tell me about this. Holding grudges. What do you mean? You... Some listen here, here's the deal. This, uh, you're sitting down. So, so this won't shock you. You're not going to fall over. Uh, the world's full of, of people that <laughs> are, are going to do bad things. They're going to wrong you. Uh, they're, they're going to betray you. They're going to cheat on you. They're going to lie to you. They're going to steal from you, right? These things are going to happen. And you've got two choices when it happens, right? You can forgive and forget, which is very difficult, right? And, and, and something that takes tremendous work, self-included, right? Um, or you can hold it inside of you. But if you're choosing to hold it inside of you, just understand that the anger and resentment that you're holding is now yours, not the other person's. The other person's over it. They're, they're gone. They never even thought about it, right? Um, so now you're holding their anger inside of you. And think of it, you know, when we talk to the kids, we, we kind of think of it as a, a, a treasure chest, if you will, right? This anger, this resentment, this hate sometimes um, that's, that's in that chest. And then it's taking up space. It's taking up space in your brain, it's taking up space in your heart and your soul. But then even worse, what if it gets knocked over and opens up, right? And, and now that anger and hate and resentment comes out of you towards someone else. So ultimately, 
not a whole lot of good things come from grudges, right? And and, and just understand that that not all people are good people, <laughs> you know. And and you got two choices: you can acknowledge it, and you can forgive them and say it's them, not me. I'm not going to own it. You know, that's Jay's issue. That's not mine. Or you can hold it inside of you, you know. But but the choice is yours. And you know, we'll, we'll talk about the book. I'm sure it's at some point here. But but the book is all about approaching different crossroads in life. And I, I, in the book, I named 37 of them. Um, it, but there's, there's all these different crossroads where I'm not going to be preachy. I'm not going to tell my kids what to do, right? The conversation about grudges is, is what we just had. I, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what's going to happen. Someone is going to screw you over, right? Someone is going to do you wrong. And you've got two choices. You can go this way, like I just broke down for you, or you can go the other way, which I just broke down for you. But you're going to have to make that choice. And that's that's really the empowering part for the kids is like dad's not telling no one wants to be told what to do right nobody at any level um but what you do want is you want someone in your corner that's been there before to kind of educate you guide you that's why you and i hire business coaches that's why we hire uh personal trainers dietitians uh shrinks <laughs> right we we hire these people who who know things that we need to know and can help us work through things and so as a parent i'm really just their coach um, and, and I'm explaining these different things that I know are going to happen in their life and say, you're going to have two choices. Okay. Start thinking about it. So when it comes up, you're not shocked by it. How much of what you're imparting to, I'm going to say your community at this point, because now that the, the, the book is tribe of teens, I'm sorry, the, the website is tribe of teens.com. Um, how much are you pointing to like you're pointing to the situation where they have the choice what else, like are there solutions are there frameworks like what else is going on here in this world that um you're saying okay these things are going to happen that has some value it sets expectation mm -hmm. uh, it's a very stoic principle to think like all right i'm going to think about what's the absolute worst thing that can happen 100 percent every single day reflect on that and then i'm always surprised when the opposite happens and so mm -hmm. you're never caught off balance when the other thing goes on. Um, what else are you doing here in this in this book community to, to set yeah. up for success? So, so yeah, we'll, we'll kind of take this piece by piece. So coming full circle to where we started this conversation, um, I had this like, oh, crap. I don't know if you can swear on this one. So I'll say, oh, crap moment um, when Tyler... Yeah, the, 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 he was a junior, obviously. The, the class of uh, 2022 graduated. And then it was right at the beginning of summer. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like our oldest is a senior. Like it hit me like a ton of bricks. And then I had this moment where I'm like, you know, financially, if, if I don't come home tomorrow, he, they're going to be okay. Right. Financially, they're going to be okay. But there's a whole lot of stuff in the old man's head here, you know, that, that I much rather have him have access to than, than money. Um, because with what I can share from the heart, from, from the brain, he'll make 10 X money, whatever I could leave him right now. And I realized I didn't, I didn't have it on paper. You know, we've had a lot of conversations obviously, but I didn't have it on paper. And so I sat down each morning. I, I blocked off one hour each morning. I just started writing, Hey, here's some things you need to know. You need to know this. You need to know, right. And it turned into some bullet points, turned into some crossroads. It turned into some stories, some reflection. And after I don't know, three, four months, I had like 300 pages of notes <laughs> and I'm like, you got a book here, right? And so, uh, so I sat down to write a love letter, if you will, to my oldest son, and, and it turned into the book title is "Essential F Words for Teens: um, The 117 Things You Need to Know Before Graduating." And you know, it just turned into to nine sections, each starting with the letter F. Uh, each section has four short chapters, right, to keep their attention. Uh, and then each chapter ends with three things you need to know before graduation. And those three bullet points compounded throughout the book turn into 117 things you need to know before graduation. And <clears throat> I wrote it for Tyler and I wrote it for me as a legacy piece, right? So, so if something happened to me, like, Hey, this is something I'll always have. Right. Mm -hmm. But then what I realized is it's really for all teens, right? It wasn't just for, for him. And, and so that was kind of when we decided to, throw it out there, go mainstream and try to get into the hands of as many late teens, you know, kids that are graduating. Just, I, I truly believe in my soul that from 16 or 17 through 21 or 22, 
are the most influential years in a human's life. And, and, you know, that window of time, because now it's like, hey, mom and dad or whoever, you know, the, whatever the family structure is, you, you've had some sort of support, you've had some sort of caretaking and, and direction. And now it's like, oh, crap, I got to figure this thing out on my own. And what I see and I coach in the uh, in the corporate world and what I see every single day, 30, 40, 50 year olds who are struggling with self-confidence. They don't know how to take that first step. They're listening to that little voice in the back of their head saying they can't. Um, and all this stuff could have just been changed. Instead of breaking these habits, what if we just instilled better habits, better, strong foundational habits during that window of time when they were first starting out? What would their trajectory have been if they adopted this 1% better, this self-reflection, this lack of fear of failing, right? But rather just, I want to fail so I can learn how not to do it so I can come back stronger. Um, you know, what if that started when they were 17, 18, 19? And, and that's really the premise of the tribe is to to instill confidence in these these kids who are just starting out in the real world to let them know that they are worthy. They are ready. Mm -hmm. right? They are capable. Um, and, and really what we do is we focus on step one. You know, just what's the first step? So we can go deep into as many subjects as you want, but like we talked about already with the books, right? It, it, just give me the one thing that I can implement today, get a small win and get a little bit better going into the next day. How do you become brilliant at the basics? You know, how do you, how do you take that first step? So that's what we're doing, you know, with, with the, with the platform. Scott, that's fantastic. I think that any feel good father here, uh, you have innate value. You have experience and wisdom of the path that you've walked in your life. And what we're seeing in, in front of us is an example of, and Scott, you included, uh, what we're seeing is an example of somebody who is um, passing on that legacy, starting that next piece and imparting the best parts of um, he and his wisdom in a concise way that is packageable, consumable, and long lasting. Uh, if we all took our time, it's, it's so funny. If we all took our time and just what were the, what are the 10 things that I know to be 100% true about the world and just hung out in a handful of principles, a handful of values about how I'm going to navigate and then impart and, and encourage our children to do the same thing that the world would just be a better place because yeah. we have that. Scott, Amen. thank you. If folks, if folks want to get a hold of you, they want to get, get involved with the book. They want to join the community. They want to learn more. How can they do that? Yeah, probably the easiest way is, is right through the website, which is tribeofteens.com. Um, the book is, again, essential F words for teens. Uh, none of them are the F word you're thinking about, obviously. Um, it's on Amazon. Right. So it, it's uh, if you type in uh, essential F words book or Scott Great's book, uh, it'll pop up. Uh, and really, you know, just through the website, there's a contact, uh, you know, piece. But but really what what we're trying to do. So no, 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 don't the first thing I get when people are like, you wrote a book for teens. Well, that's stupid. Teens don't read books. OK, fair enough. Um, <laughs> you know, so so what we're doing with the website is uh, we just we if you want to get on our newsletter. Right. So so we're taking the book and we're saying, all right, we're going to take this one excerpt this week. Right. This one concept. And it's almost like the ABCs. So ABC, easy to start. Right. But then somewhere in the middle for years, I thought LMNOP was one letter. Right. It all just gets muddled and jumbled in the middle. Right. And then how do we get to X, Y, Z? So so really, we take one concept and in five minutes or less. Right. It, we, one per week. Um, we just say, here's the idea. Here's how you can start small win, implement it today. Here's the challenges you're going to face, right? And some things to think about when you get there so that ultimately you can finish, you know, and, and, and then try again. So, uh, so over the course of five minutes, 10 minutes of, of the weekly newsletter, the, you know, about a year from now, they'll be able to digest the whole book if they don't want to sit down and write the whole book. And then we're also uh, about to launch a podcast, same concept. And, and the idea of the podcast is, we want to highlight um, certain kids 
you know, their peers who, who are doing amazing things, um, sharing some of their struggles, right? Just having healthy conversations about some real stuff. Uh, and then the other cool thing that, that we want to do, and maybe Jay, you can uh, jump on and be a guest in the future, is uh, take people who are doing some pretty awesome things as adults and allow them to come on and talk to their 17-year-old self and say, this is who I was when I was 17. And these are the struggles I had. And these are the things I wish I knew then that I know now, right? Because too often, if you go back to when you're 17, you think everyone else has it figured out. A lot of adults still think this. Everyone, oh, he's got it all figured out, right? No, no one does. <laughs> right? um, and so I think it's cool or will be cool for these kids who are just starting out to hear from some people that they think are super, you know, Jay's got a platform and a podcast and a website and he's doing this and that, you know, he's got it all figured out. And then if you can come on and be a little vulnerable, right. And, and share like, dude, when I was 17, I didn't, yeah, I, you know, I, I could, my biggest choice was like shorts or, or jeans, you know, whatever. Like I wasn't right. thinking about anything career related and, and then just what your journey looked like. And I'm not saying that was you, Jay, but um, we live in New York. So obviously it was jeans. Um, yes, obviously jeans. Unless it was August. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, man. That's, that's uh, how they can connect. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Jay, thank you so much for allowing me time uh, and the space to, to share with you today on your show. If you guys enjoyed this episode uh, and you want to follow Jay, subscribe. Let me get the, the picture in there. Subscribe to the, the Feel Good Fatherhood show and uh, check out future guests and uh, all the good things Jay's sharing. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Oh, and by the way, uh, YouTube is also showing you right here the next video. It's right there. there. It uh, right. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's going to be a good one. Uh, YouTube has decided that this is the next one that you should watch. So go ahead and click it. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Click that one.